What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a great day so far. Getting into this episode of GH. So yesterday was a beautiful episode, lovely episode. And today we're back with the BS with the DOD. Um, Christina continues to be dumb and naive. It's like I understand she's into DOD hook, line and sinker. I get it. But it's like she refuses to question anything about DOD. Like the simple fact that this man is asking you for large sums of money. Like he basically told her in order for her to become a member of the trust or whatever inner circle that they got, she has to pay $10,000. I said, what? 10 G's? If that ain't a scam, I don't know what it is. So she got paid $10,000. But he told her. But he told her that he's willing to take a payment plan plus twenty five hundred dollars down payment. I said, that's a whole scam. So apparently she recorded some audio or whatever for him about a secret. That's so I guess it's a major secret or whatever about a family member that would hurt their family's, I guess, social standing in Port Charles. Um. I don't know who the secret could be about. I, 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 it has to be some type of rewrite. It has to, because what could she possibly know that's so damaging about a family member? It can't be Sonny because she doesn't know anything about his business. Sonny doesn't tell her anything. He doesn't tell most people nothing about his business unless you're a part of his inner circle. He definitely don't tell his kids about his illegal doings. Of course not. I don't, I don't know if it's about Alexis. Maybe it could be Sam. Something she did, maybe. I doubt it's Molly. Um, I don't know. It, but I'm pretty sure it's probably going to be some type of rewrite. Something that somebody did that we never heard of before. Probably. Um, she's just dumb. I'm like, so you basically handed over some information that could damage your entire family. Not just one family member. But it could have consequences for all of y'all. And you so gleefully hand this information over to him. Like, are you insane? <laughs> are you crazy? She just don't think. So Sam come over there or whatever to do her little DOD class. And he puts a blindfold over her talking or whatever. Whatever. It's like a trust exercise or whatever the case may be. And he basically recorded the whole thing so he could go back and watch it. I feel like Sam is in over her head with this plan. I have a feeling she's telling Jason that she need more time or whatever for him to tell Sonny she need more time with this plan. How much more time do you need? Because it's like you're not getting any closer to getting whatever information you're looking for. It seems like you're not getting any closer. And it looks to me like Shiloh's getting into her head every second of the day. Like certain facial expressions she be making and stuff like that. It just I don't know if she's playing a really good game. But to me, it looked like he's getting into her mind. I'm just saying. Um, like this whole DOD, I'm I'm compl I have to be honest, I'm completely over it. Like I'm ready for whatever secrets people are hiding. Like it's time for it to come out. I'm ready for this to be over so we can move on to new business. Because. <laughs> Shiloh, I have to agree with Jason on this. Shiloh really has a huge ego. He's getting way too arrogant, too cocky. And you can see that little smirk on his face every day. Every time he's on screen, he got that little stupid smirk on his face. I'm like, yeah, that's the sign of arrogance. He's very arrogant. Um, Jason has a valid point, though. Shiloh is going to think that he can handle Jason. You know what I mean? Like, Sonny, he's just ready to, you know, put whatever little plan he got in motion or whatever, because he's sick of sitting around waiting for Michael and Sam to do something about this. You know, he wants to do something about it. But I feel like Sonny might need to stand down on this. As hard as it is for him to do, I think he should stand down. Because if Michael has a plan, or I don't know what Sam doing, but she taking too long with her little plan. Um, I mean, Sonny doesn't want to make, he wants to make a move, but he feel like he can't because of how Christina would react. At this point, I wouldn't care less about how Christina would be would react to it. You need to more so worry about the DA. 
in the police. Like, that's who you need to worry about because Jason already put hands on him. So, and the DA made it perfectly clear that if something happens to Shiloh, she knows who did it, basically. Who's number one suspect. And she's already gunning for the Corinthos organization as it is. So, you know, you're going to have to be a little smarter here. You know what I mean? Like, even if you do something to him, at least make sure there's no evidence. Like, I'm talking zero. No witnesses. Nothing that could trace back to you. Because if there is, you hit. I'm just saying, the DA is not playing. She's like a dog with a bone when it comes to them. So, tread lightly. Um, I mean, Michael has a pretty good plan, though. I mean, you know, getting Christina to trust him and stuff like that. Um, basically, by... Being there for her, not judging her, you know, Michael's the more level headed one. You know, he thinks he's a thinker, but uh, I don't know if his plan is going to work either. I mean, it sounds good on paper, but, you know, implementing it might be a little bit more easier said than done. Um, You know, Michael basically told her, like, you know, if you need money for something, I'll give it to you or whatever. But of course, she went to Julian and asked Julian for the money. She talking about Christina talking about, oh, don't tell my dad about it. Julian had a good point. He was like, do it look like I talked to your father? <laughs> Said exactly. Um, it's not like Sonny and Julian are buddy buddy, so you ain't gotta worry about him telling Sonny nothing. Um, so he gave her the ten thousand dollars. I said, Well, Julian, can I borrow ten G's? I mean, you just freely handed out ten thousand dollars to people. Can I get a little I take a thousand. You know what I'm saying? Like, he just freely handed out ten grand to people. I'm like, mm, no. Can I put my order in? I need a couple a couple grand. I'm just saying. Um, it wouldn't hurt. <laughs> you just freely handing her an envelope with some money in it. I'm like, okay. I'll come to poor Charles in a minute and say you was my biological father. I'm just saying. Mama's baby. I don't know who the daddy is, but I say, hey, for 10 grand. I'll call you father. Hey. <laughs> Get it how you can. Um. But I do agree with the DA, though. I mean, it is kind of hypocritical of Julian to sit there and tell her, oh, y'all need to catch Ryan. Do whatever you can to catch Ryan. I mean, with your rap sheet and Ava's rap sheet, y'all need to fall back. But I mean, at this point, what can the PCPD do to find Ryan at this point? I mean, the Canadian police has already closed the investigation on their end. But the PCPD is keeping their investigation open. But Ryan went missing. He disappeared in Canada. That's way out of the PCPD's jurisdiction. So what can they do about that? You know what I'm saying? Like, all they can do is tell their officers to keep an eye out in Port Charles. That's, like, literally all they can do. Because I don't think Jordan or the DA or, you know, Laura, for that matter, can send PCPD officers to Canada to look for... Ryan, like they don't have the jurisdiction to do that or the permission to do it. So, I mean, at this point, their hands are kind of tied with it. So the DA is also into the whole DOD thing. She got one of Shiloh's books and then she bumped into Sam outside the house because she going for a seminar for a class or whatever. I said, OK, so y'all all just all, so they pretty much got almost every character on the show wrapped up in this DOD mess. I said, OK. That's not interesting. <laughs> like, for real, I'm so over this DOD nonsense. Like, it's giving me a straight up headache. Um. So anyway, moving on from that. So these fools, Oscar and Jocelyn, went to. Uh, who is this? So these fools went to um, the county clerk's office to get a marriage license. They wanted to get married. I said, are you serious? Oscar and Jocelyn seem like two bright kids, but I'm like, wouldn't they know that in the state of New York, you would need a parent's permission to get married at 15 and 16 years old? Like, you can't get married without, and I'm pretty sure Carly and Jax are not giving their permission. I'm sure Drew and Kim are definitely not giving their permission for y'all to get married. So, I think that they're trying to recreate, this is what I think, I and this is just my opinion. I feel like the writers are somewhat trying to loosely create like another Robin and Stone type storyline with the two of these, with them two. Um, they reminded me, this storyline reminded me a little, a smidge of Robin and Stone, not comparing the two because there is no comparison. You can never recreate the magic of Robin and Stone like that's that's a no. You definitely can't. 
But they kind of somewhat reminded me a little bit, just a tad bit, of Robin and Stone days, um, you know. But I thought it was a nice scene of them on the bridge and stuff like that, putting a, the little lock on the bridge and stuff with their initials written on it and stuff like that, and thinking that people were going to, you know, um, make up stories about them and who J and, you know, I guess J and O, what that stands for or whatever. That was a nice scene between them. Um, it sucks that Oscar's dying, though. I hate to see it, but I guess that's the writer's brilliant idea for whatever reason to kill him off. Um, so anyway, Trina and Cam do look like they could make a good match with each other. Like I like the little back and forth banter that they kind of got with each other. And I did love the scene between Franco and Cameron where he was trying to have the little sex ed talk with him. However awkward was it. Um, it was a very awkward type conversation. I feel like the conversation was very important for him to have with Cameron as a father figure slash stepfather. It was very important for him to have that conversation with him. Seeing as Cam is what, 15, 16. So it was important for him to have that conversation with him. But I do feel like Elizabeth kind of went a little overboard. Like she overreacted a little, I feel, because she barely like she doesn't really know Trina. You know, she only met her for two seconds at the courthouse. And already you're pleading with Franco to have the sex talk with Cameron all because a girl came and, you know, was standing by his side at the court hearing as a friend. And that's all they are is friends. There's nothing romantic going on with them. There's nothing sexually going on with them. That's why Cameron didn't really want to have that conversation because he he knew like there's nothing going on. Like I'm not sleeping with anybody. Me and Trina are just friends. I do feel like. Elizabeth overreacted. You know, I like I said, it's important to have that conversation with your kids, but she overreacted. Like, you didn't see them doing anything. They weren't kissing. They weren't booed up. They weren't none of those things. So, I don't see why she overreacted like that. It's like, chill out. There's nothing going on. Um, but I feel like Franco somewhat handled that conversation well. <laughs> I know Franco was nervous to actually give that conversation. You know, like, what father wouldn't or stepdad or whatever. Like, who wouldn't have that, you know, be nervous to have that conversation with their kid or stepkid or whatever? Um, I mean, of course you would. I mean, that's an awkward conversation to have. You know what I mean? It would have been even more awkward. You know, Cam would have really been embarrassed had, Ele had Elizabeth been having that conversation with him. I mean, who wants to talk sex with their mother? You know what I'm saying? It's one thing to talk about it with your dad or your stepdad or whatever. That's one thing. But with your mama, yeah, that's a little awkward. It's like, that's a conversation no boy wants to have, not with their mother. I'm just saying. Um, definitely not. Like, you you just don't want to have that kind of, conf you know, that conversation. But um, anyway, moving on from that. Uh, who else? Who else? I did love the scene between Elizabeth and um, Bobby. I want to see more of Bobby. Like, I want to see Bobby in her own storyline that revolves around romance. You know, maybe her and Scott can rekindle something. I, like I said yesterday, Scott had chemistry with all his exes yesterday. I was like, the chemistry was crazy. Him and Laura, him and Lucy, him and Bobby. Like, the chemistry was just wild. I was like, wow. It's been all these years and he still got all this chemistry with each and every one of them. I said, it's crazy how you can literally pair him back up with any one of them and it, it would be gold. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's crazy because not a lot of people can do that. But Scott definitely is the man, though. I would say, like, I wouldn't be, a, you know, opposed to him getting back with Lucy or Bobby. I just want to see Bobby get her own storyline again, you know? Even though she's a recurring character, but still. You know, she's a vet. Let her have a story, like a little romance story or something, you know, something. Um... I did love their conversation, though. I do feel like Elizabeth, I understand Elizabeth has her concerns about Aiden's sexual pre preference. But at this point, like Elizabeth said, he's a kid. You know, she don't want to push. And you know what I'm saying? Like, she just want to continue to let him be him and who he is. And I think that she should, you know, just fall back a little bit. Don't mention it to him. Don't bring up nothing. Just let it go. You know? Ain't no sense in trying to speculate what he is and who he is. And there's no sense in doing that. You know, once he get older and becomes a teenager or, you know, a young adult, he's going to figure that out for himself. And when he's ready, he will come to you. Let him come to you. You don't bring it to him. You know what I mean? I, I That's just the approach I think she should take with it. You know, but I, I do understand it, though. But she just shouldn't take that kind of approach with it. 
Um, I think that's everything in this episode, pretty much, because it wasn't it was it wasn't really a whole lot to it, but you know something. But hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about today's episode. I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.